Chemistry lecture number 54, percent composition. Percent composition gives the percent by mass of each element in a compound. For example, let's find the percent composition of calcium phosphate. So the first thing we need to do is we have to find the molar mass of calcium phosphate. So here's the formula for calcium phosphate. Um, all right, so we have three calciums, that's three here. On the periodic chart, calcium is listed as being 40.1 grams. 40.1 is a rounded number. Anyway, three times 40.1 is 120, and this 120 is a rounded value. Phosphorus, there are two phosphoruses. And on the periodic chart, phosphorus weighs 31 grams per mole. Two times 31 gives me 62. And then oxygen, four times two is eight. We have eight oxygens times 16. 16 is a rounded number taken from the uh, molar value of oxygen on the periodic chart. 8 times 16 is 128. And then if we add all these together, we get 310 grams per mole. So one mole of calcium phosphate weighs 310 grams, rounded to three significant figures. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this individual masses and divide them by 310. So in one mole of calcium phosphate, there's 120 grams of calcium phosphate 120 divided by 310 times 100 gives me 38.7. All right, phosphorus. One mole of phosphorus contains 62 grams of phosphorus. 62 divided by 310 times 100 gives me 20. 20% 20 phosphorus. And then finally, oxygen. One mole of calcium phosphate contains 128 grams of oxygen. 128 divided by 310 times 100 gives me 41.3 percent approximately and that's our answer so <coughs> calcium phosphate is 38.7 percent calcium 20 percent phosphorus and 41.3 percent oxygen by mass <coughs> so we've rewritten the percent composition again right here and what all this means is that if you had 100 grams of calcium phosphate 38.7 grams or 38.7 percent would be calcium, 20 grams would be phosphorus, and 41.3 grams would be oxygen. And notice that the sum of all these numbers add up to 100. So that's all percent composition means. If you had 100 grams of the compound, how many grams of the individual elements would you have? And there are some problems where you're not given the formula for the compound, but you still have to find the percent composition. Here's a problem. A compound is made of magnesium and oxygen. When 13.6 grams of it is decomposed, you obtain 5.40 grams of oxygen. Find the percent composition. So it's made out of magnesium and oxygen, and when you add the masses of each of these, you end up with 13.6 grams. Um, when we took this 13.6 gram sample and then broke it apart into its components, we weighed the amount of oxygen that we got, and we got 5.40 grams of oxygen, but we don't know how much magnesium we have. So here's an expression of all this information. The compound's made out of magnesium and oxygen, and the total mass of our sample is 13.6 grams, and we know that of this 13.6 grams, 5.4 grams of it is going to be oxygen. So to find the amount of magnesium, it's 13.6 minus 5.4, which is what we have written here. And we end up with 8.2 grams of uh, magnesium. So now that we have the masses of the individual elements and the total mass, 13.6, we can find the percent composition. All right, so the amount of magnesium in our sample is 8.2, and the total amount of our sample is 13.6. So 8.2 divided by 13.6 times 100 is 60.29 or 60.3. And then the amount of oxygen in our sample is 5.4. Total mass of the sample is 13.6. 5.4 divided by 13.6 times 100 gives me 39.7. So there's our answer. Our sample has 60.3% magnesium and 39.7% oxygen by mass. What this means is that if we had 100 grams of this sample, 60.3 grams of it would be magnesium, and 39.7 grams of it would be oxygen. Note again that if you were to add these two numbers together, you'd end up with 100. Remember that percent means per 100. Let's try another problem. A compound is formed when 1.4 grams of nitrogen combines with 0.3 grams of hydrogen. 
find the percent composition. So our compound is made out of nitrogen and hydrogen, and this time they tell us the amount of each element. We have 1.4 grams of nitrogen in the sample and 0.3 grams of hydrogen. <coughs> so the mass of nitrogen and the mass of hydrogen will give us the total mass of the sample. They tell us that the mass of nitrogen is 1.4 and the total mass of hydrogen is 0.3. So if we add these two together, the total mass of our sample is 1.7. So to find the percent of nitrogen in our sample, it's the amount of nitrogen, 1.4, divided by the total mass of our sample, 1.7, times so 1.4 divided by 1.7 times 100 gives me 82.4 percent and then the amount of hydrogen is 0.3 divided by the total mass of the sample 1.7 times 100 gives me 17.6 so there's our answer our sample is 82.4 percent nitrogen and 17.6 percent oxygen this means that if we had 100 grams of the sample we'd have 82.4 grams of nitrogen and 17.6 grams of oxygen. Note again that if you were to add the percent, these percentages here, it should all add up to 100. So sometimes you get these problems in uh, chemistry books, sometimes you don't, so it's helpful to know how to do it. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 54, percent composition.